So we recently released the Get Your Game On SVG bundle, which includes uh, not only the football jersey, but a basketball jersey. And although there are some variations in the fonts that are used for the numbers, especially in basketball, uh, in football, typically they use a font, and maybe there's a different name for the font, but here is a version of it. It's called Jersey M54. You can download it for personal use on defont.com. Here it is, just Google Jersey M54 and download it. Um, there's plenty of videos online that help you with the installation of the font if you need help with that. Uh, but today what we're gonna do is show you how to create a name for the jersey. So if we take a look at the PDF file that's included in your download here, uh, you'll notice that this is the back of the jersey here, and there's another element that goes on top of it. So we can do two things here, and I'll go over both of them. But the file that we need to bring in just to use as a reference is main one blue jeans. Blue jeans is the color of the cardstock that we used. So the file is right here, main one blue jeans. I'm gonna, I'm gonna minimize this. And I'm using shortcuts a lot here, obviously, shortcuts a lot six, where you can literally just take and just drag and drop the file into the software. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom out, and I'm gonna zoom out by hitting Command minus. You can also zoom out by clicking down here. Okay, and then there's also a magnifying glass right here. And if you click and hold it, you can zoom in, zoom out. There's a zoom out button up here now. But either way, uh, what we can do to create some more space on the mat is grab our eraser tool. can make it a little bit larger so that it erases more of the area with less effort. And I'm going to get rid of all of these elements except for uh, this little guy down here. So as we get into tighter areas, we can decrease the size of the eraser so that it doesn't mess with anything. Okay, then let's see here. We can take and right click on this and ungroup it. We're gonna lose the little score mark here. That's okay, we don't really need it. And then I'm going to break this apart again. And there we go, okay. I love how easy it is to accomplish what I just did in shortcuts a lot. Um, Design space does need a, a little bit more functionality to get to this point. You know, a lot of people uh, mention how they want to be able to break things apart like this. Well, this is the software that you're going to need until Design Space adds that functionality. Okay, so with that said, what we're going to do here is, as you can see, I'm going to change the color on this by highlighting it and going over here to the palette clicking on the current color, and I'm gonna make it red, just so that we can separate these a little bit more. And you can see where this little overlay goes. Now, you can, if you want, make the words so that they go right here, or you can just completely eliminate this piece since it gets glued on top, and use more of the space back here. I think, ideally, you're probably gonna want a little bit more space on the back of the shirt, uh, to get as much of the font on there as you can, especially if you have a longer name. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here to the left-hand side, and I'm gonna select the Type tool, and I'm just gonna click, and I am going to write the word Peyton for Walter Peyton, who is a former Chicago Bear. And with this highlighted now, you can go over here to the Font Selection, and we're going to select that font that we looked up and we downloaded, Jersey M54. So let's go here, and we're going to scroll down until we see Jersey M54. And of course, I passed it up. There it is. Okay, so there is, there's my font. Okay, and it's ready to cut out. Now, another thing that I want to do and then what you typically see on professional jerseys. And I wanna actually just get an idea of what this is really gonna look like. So I have the font selected. I went back to the little color palette and I'm gonna change that to white and click okay. I like how that looks. 
And then what I want to do is create a shadow for uh, the letters, okay? And we can either do that all together, all in one, or we can make one large shadow, depending on how you want to do it. Now, one thing that I notice here is that I'm not a big fan of the spacing on these letters, to be honest. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually break this apart. I'm going to right click and ungroup it. So now all the letters are by themselves, and I can move them freely. Okay, and you can see what Shortcuts Lot's doing here. It's actually creating these little blue lines that you see here are to help you with the placement to make sure that everything is on the same plane, which is a very helpful little tool. Okay, I'm going to bring this in. And another thing you can do, if you go to Edit, I'm sorry, if you go to your Preferences, there's a setting under Edit where the Nudge, you can change how much the arrow key on your keyboard moves something every time you click the left or right or up or down arrow. So now it's moving it a little bit less. I'm going to mess with that a little bit more. And I'm going to make this 0 0.01 inches. So now you can see why every little click of the key, of the arrow key on my keyboard, moves it by that increment, which is very helpful. Instead of trying to use your mouse to get the placement, you can use your arrow key. So let me get that where I want. Okay. And we'll take a look at it. I think the A needs to move over a little bit. Okay, I think that looks good. Maybe a little more separation there. Okay. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to select all of these. So what I'm doing here is I clicked on the letter P first. I'm holding down the shift key and I'm going to begin clicking all these letters and it's going to select them all. You can see how it's it selected them all. I'm going to right click and I'm going to group that together. So now it's all one group. No matter which letter I click on, it's going to select all of them. Now, there we go. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to have it highlighted, and I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to copy it, and then I'm going to go to edit again and hit paste in place. And what that did was it created two versions of this, okay? So I'm going to take one of the versions here, and I'm going to change this to an orange color, just so we can see the difference. So there's that one, and if I hide it by clicking on the eyeball here, for this layer, you'll see that, well, it looks like it's turning white, but it's really not. That's the layer underneath it. We pasted it in place. So it's literally right on top of itself, okay? So all I'm doing now is turning on that new one that I pasted, okay? So we're going to keep this one here. Actually, I'm going to take this and move this down a layer, okay? I did that wrong. Let me undo that. I'll bring this here. There we go. So now the white one is on top of the orange one. I'm going to take the orange one. I have it highlighted here. And I'm going to go up here to the little wrench, and I'm going to click Shadow Rounded. Okay, and you can see what that did. And I can increase or decrease the amount that it created that shadow. I'm also going to weld this so that when I cut it, it's all one piece. Now let's take a look and see what that looks like with the actual uh, letters on top. Not bad. I'm going to go back here, and you can mess with this in real time, okay? And I'm not sure which one I like better. I have 0 0.05, and I have 0.1. Let me try something in the middle there. I'm going to type in 0 0.07, okay? I, I kind of like that, but I don't like how the O and the N are overlapping. I might want these separated. So let me go to point, let's go to point 0.5. 0 0.05. Okay, and those are also touching. Let's go 0 0.02. That might not be enough, but I do like how it's isolated. Let's try 0 0.03. That looks good. Kind of like that. Okay, so, so now we have two versions here. We have the actual letters 
on top, if I turn off this layer here, you can see that this is the shadow that I created. Okay. And then this layer here is the shadow. I can turn that on and off as well. So if I want to, I'm technically done. I could play around with that a little bit more. Um, that's up to you. I'm going to change this to a bluish color so we can still see it. I'll obviously remember to cut it in white. But here we go. Okay, and you can see how nice that fits. And at this point, I can get rid of the jersey. I'm going to zoom out. I just clicked on it and then hit delete. And let's see if this will actually fit on here. And it still fits there too. So that worked out. Okay. So now if you want, uh, if you have a machine that's compatible with Sure Cuts a lot, you can cut directly from the software. Otherwise, if you want to bring this into Cricut Design Space or any other software, uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to go to File, Export. And I'm going to save that to the desktop. I'm going to call it Peyton. And you want to select SVG as the output, hit save. And then, of course, if you're saving this for Design Space, just make sure that Design Space compatible is checked and hit OK. And you'll see here, let me, let me minimize my screen here. OK, and you can see that it created this SVG file. And I'm going to pop it in here just for now. OK, so I'm opening up design space at this point and we're going to do a new project i'm going to hit upload okay so here is my file i'm just going to drag and drop it there hit upload okay and it comes into design space nicely we'll add it to the canvas and we'll take a look at it here and it's all one piece we're going to right click on this and ungroup it okay so now we have that and that as separate entities and we're going to want to attach that as well. Attach that, and then we can hit Make, and you can see here that it is ready to go. Okay. Hey, thanks for crafting along with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, check out some of our other videos, and please consider hitting that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to visit our site and check out our free SVG section, where you'll find over 140 free SVG files, complete with assembly tutorials. I'll see you in the craft room.